Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today's problem, we're gonna look at calculating the moment of inertia of this wheel, which has, uh, which has three spokes. Uh, the goal is going to be to calculate it with respect to three different axes. The axis A goes um, right through the center of mass of the object. Uh, axis B and C are along the rim. So how would you calculate the moment of inertia if I was rotating this wheel about those three different axes? Now we're gonna assume that the mass of each spoke, uh, there's three of them, is m, and it's also equal to uh, the mass of the wheel. So how would you kind of use our formulas for moment of inertia to calculate the total moment of inertia of this more complex object? All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja, and if you have the means, consider giving a super thanks. A dollar or two goes a long way into helping me. All right, let's get started. All right, so we're first gonna consider the case of the moment of inertia uh, through the axis A, that is through the center. You can see it right here, okay? In the center of those three spokes and in the center of the hoop. The next thing we need is we're going to look up the values of the moment of inertia of different objects. And for that, you go in your textbook and you should find a table that might look similar to this one. So typically there are a lot of different objects. They could be disks, rings, rods, spheres, for example, or just point masses like satellites. And what you do is these moment of inertias are typically through the center of each object. Now, sometimes, like this case over here, they also represent the moment of inertia of a rod or a plank through the end. You can see the axis here is through the end of the object. So the value is a little bit different. But most of the other cases are always through the center. So now we consider our wheel here. So what do we have? We have our wheel is made up of what? One hoop. And for the first case, we're rotating it through the center. So the moment of inertia, you can represent the hoop by a ring. So the moment of inertia is simply the mass of the object, which is m, right? In my case, the mass of the hoop is equal to the mass of each spoke. And the radius is simply r. So you do mr squared is for the hoop. Now what do we have? We have three spokes. Well, what is the spokes moment of inertia? Now think about one of these spokes right here. Um, there are two values for the moment of inertia of a spoke. Uh, there's this guy right here. That is if I was rotating a rod through the center. But I'm not. I'm rotating each one of these spokes through the end of the spoke. So actually for the spokes, I really should use this second result, which is one-third mass of the spoke. And L is the total length of the spoke. For us, the length of the spoke is simply equal to the radius of the wheel. So that simplifies our result. So for each spoke, guess what? For each spoke, I get one-third m, and the length is r. So you have to do r squared. And now I also have three of those. So I have to multiply each one, um, uh, the result of one spoke by three to get the total moment of inertia of the spokes. All right, now what do you do? Well, all you have to do now is simply add them up. So our total moment of inertia and I'm going to write the little a here through that axis, through the center of mass, is the moment of inertia of the hoop plus the moment of inertia of the spokes. So this is pretty straightforward. So you get mr squared here plus, now I add this, you multiply the 3 and the 3 can cancel over here. Um, then you're left with another term, which is mr squared. Okay, uh, so in this case here, my final moment of inertia through the center of mass is simply going to be 2 mr squared. Okay, uh, this is how you can calculate the moment of inertia of a more complicated object by building it up and using our formulas from a table. All right, for our second part, we're interested in what is the moment of inertia through axis B. Uh, axis B is right here. And again, this axis runs in and out of the page right here. Now, the one thing that is important about axis B is that it is parallel to axis A. That is really, really important. Now, if you wanted to calculate the moment of inertia of this entire object with respect to axis B, um, a trick here and one of the keys to understanding this problem is to use the parallel axis theorem. Okay? The parallel axis theorem says this, the moment of inertia through an axis that is parallel, so I'm just going to write here parallel, uh, to the axis that runs through the center of mass, okay? So in this case, 
axis B is parallel to axis A. The way you calculate it is you simply take the moment of inertia of your complicated object through the center of mass. So for us, guess what? This term here is simply the moment of inertia through axis A. That's what we calculated in part one. But we have to add a correction term. And the correction term looks like this. It's the total mass of the object multiplied by, it's sometimes written as d squared, okay? And d here is the distance between both of those axes. So in this case, it's the distance between what? It's the distance between a and b, that's it. So for us, our value d is simply equal to the radius of the wheel. That is the distance between axis a and axis b. So this is, becomes a pretty straightforward problem if you use the parallel axis theorem. So I would say that the moment of inertia through axis B in this case is equal to the moment of inertia through axis A plus. Now let's think about this correction term. The correction term is the total mass. What's the total mass of the object? For us, it is 4m. That's the total mass of the object. And again, I said my value D was simply equal to R. So here you have R squared. <clears throat> All right, put everything together now. So what do we have for moment of inertia of A? That's written up top. We have 2MR squared and then plus 4MR squared. So at the end, I get that my moment of inertia through axis B is equal to 6MR squared. The one thing we notice is that the moment of inertia through any axis that is parallel to the center of mass is going to result that the moment of inertia that we get is bigger than IA. All right, that's a great problem and a great application of this parallel axis theorem here. All right, in the last case, we're going to consider the moment of inertia through axis C. Axis C is located right here on the rim of the wheel. Now, one thing we can use again, have a look. This axis runs in and out of the page. The axis is also parallel to axis C. So guess what we're doing? We're using the parallel axis theorem. And one thing you should note is that, well, if you just blindly just apply this formula, this is what you would get. You get the moment of inertia through the center of mass is IA plus the total mass, which is M4, and then the distance from axis C to axis A is this guy right here. That is also the radius, right? So you do radius squared here. At the end, guess what you get? You get 6MR squared. That is the moment of inertia through axis C. All right, pretty straightforward. You notice some things here, that our moment of inertia through axis B is equal to axis C. It would be equal to any axis that is anywhere on this rim, okay, because they are the same distance away from the center of mass of the object. And we also notice that both of those moment of inertias are bigger than the moment of inertia through the center of mass. Okay, so this is the relationship between all of those three values. All right, folks, that's it for me. Hopefully you appreciate this video and you learn how to use the parallel axis theorem to find the moment of inertia through a complicated object. We'll see you next time.